This great God who could have chosen to worship with seas that he spit himself where boisterous waves become little babies when they see his face. Send as far as the eye can see, curling through the feet of my master's feet. And yet he chose to worship with you. Be silent. The Lord is in his holy temple. This great God who could have chosen to worship with the fowl of the earth of the year, where the Lion King himself moves. Be silent. This great God who could have worshipped with trees of every color, roses throwing petals at the Master's feet, and yet he chose to worship with you. You would have to be still to hear the beautiful symphonies of the oak trees. You would have to be still to hear the symphonies and the melodies of the oak trees. And yet he chose to worship with you. You with your kisses of Judas. You with the 30 pieces of time. The spectacle you call worship. Make way for the king is here. So shh. Let me take and seize this golden interstice of time to welcome you all to this exciting occasion, the first of its kind, a pedigree pastor, yeah. <laughs> a man beyond the frontiers. You can see that when we speak about excellence, I think half of the work is done by merely presenting yourself good. Yeah. Pastor. No, no, for Motuakai, all the way from Johannesburg. Yeah. He's going to speak words of excellence to us because we are thirst, we are hungry for something, and we are not nearly going to settle for the status quo. We are not going to accept enough in our vocabulary because excellence is about realizing that there is much more to conquer and the more we conquer the more we realize there are many more worlds for us to conquer the more we acquire knowledge the more we learn that we know nothing the more we appreciate there is much more to know and i guess that is precisely what he's going to do for us he's going to make us feel so uncomfortable with the status quo and yearn and dream for something much bigger he has come along with his one and only flamboyant and fluorescent wife <laughs>
na soka madichaba kona mudimu yo palelo anke ho palelo wana tau yale lokola chutia ro ra mudimu wa rona ro kreste mabale de lokela ro mwa ho witsepo witlagiso hilonje bua le bana ba ga gore go leboga amen second samuel chapter 6 verse 14 line 8 the Bible says, then David danced before the Lord with all his might. How interesting that this text has become uh, one of the most uh, theologically debated texts in the STA church uh, between the conserves and the liberals. Uh, the issue of dancing. The other states, the location of the dancing is outside the temple, so it's irrelevant. And the others say, we dance anyhow because David danced before the Lord. So, and I want to just correct the theology of the two this morning. To say that the location is not really important, but the reason to dance. Is yeah, yeah. So let's start here. Others say, we don't dance because of the location. Others say, we dance because he danced. Yeah. So others don't dance, yet they have the reasons to dance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're right. And others dance when they have no reasons to dance. Yeah. You missed it. So they, they, they dance without a reason. Yeah. They don't dance when they have the reasons. Hey. Yeah. So that's why you see them debating the whole day in church. Why is he dancing? Why is he sweating in church? And, and yet they have reasons evident to them on why they should dance, but they are not dancing. But please follow the preacher very well. The dance is not actually the main story. Uh, but go back a few verses before you can get to chapter 14. Uh, if you read the story very well, the Bible says, follow me closely. The Bible says, David has now become the king of Israel. He has just entered into office. And the first thing he asked is, where is the ark of God? He says, I, I can't start my leadership in the absence of the ark of God. Where is God? And so they tell him, no, God is not in his rightful place. He's somewhere in the enemy's camp. In other words, David is now perplexed and confused. Yeah. How is the ark of God absent for 52 years yeah. while others have been leading in the absence of God? Hear the words of the preacher this morning. Be careful of leading in the absence of the ark. Yeah. Many of us have started things in the absence of God. Yeah. And many of us carry on as if the ark is present when the ark is absent. Yeah. So we have a church full of elders yeah. that are leading in the absence of the Mm. But hear the words of the preacher this morning. How I wish yeah. that the Adventist church can have leaders yes, who would refuse to lead with the, in the absence of the ark. Yeah. Where is God? Yeah. So that's the question of David. And they tell him the ark is in the enemy's camp. And so he picks up soldiers and, and they go and fetch the ark. Yeah. When they arrive to go fetch the ark, follow the story very well. Yes, sir. When they arrive to go fetch the ark, mm. the Bible says that they look at how the enemy transports the ark. Yes, sir. It was the most extravagant way. And be careful also of extravagant things. Mm. All right, all right. And so the Bible says, friends, they, they, they look at this method. The ark is transported on oxen. Yeah. And the Bible says on a new cart. Yeah. And so David looks at this method and he employs the same method to transport the ark of God. But look at the Bible. The Bible says as the ark is being transported in a wrongful manner. Number one, be careful of transporting God's things in unholy manners. And so the Bible says, friends, they... The, the, the ark is on a new cart, right? Yeah. And, and they are transporting the ark. And, and there's a servant of David. Remember, the ark is going back to Israel. Yeah. And as they are transporting it, next to it, there was a servant of David. His name was Uzzah. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, I don't know whether the ark or the oxen hit a pothole. <laughs> but something happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the ark 
was vibrating yeah. and it appeared as if the ark was falling yeah. and the bible says the servant of david Uzzah, yeah. looks at this ark yeah. as it's about to fall reaches out to the ark yeah. to assist the ark yeah. from falling yeah. and the bible says the god of the ark yeah. kills him yeah. and the bible says yeah. david leaves the ark at the house of obijah yeah. and lives for three months in the palace yeah. and he hears that the ark is performing and the bible says he goes back and fetches it yeah. after he fetches it and then when the ark arrives yeah. in israel he starts to dance that's what the story is but back up with me we pick up a few lessons and we can go for lunch the Bible says that ark is being transported right and next to the ark there's a servant of David his name is Uzzah and the Bible says Uzzah sees the ark as if it's about to fall it is appearing it is an appearance the ark is not falling yeah. It is appearing as if it's falling, mm. but yet it is not falling. It is just an appearance. Mm. It appears as if our lives yeah. are messed up. Hey. It is just an appearance. Yeah. Who are you to assist God? Yeah. It appears as if our marriages are falling. Yeah. It is just an appearance. Who are you to assist God? Yeah. Mm. Uh. Now you hear them assisting God, trying to discuss how the youth worships. I know there's a certain messages that are roaming around. They made them pay on Sabbath. Yeah. Who are you to assist God? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me not get there. Let me not get political. I'm just a pastor. And so look, look at the story for my friends. There's, there's a second there, Usa. And he looks at this whole thing as the ark appears as if it's about to fall. He reaches out to the ark to assist the ark from not falling. He's doing a noble thing, but the God of the ark kills him. Okay. Why should he kill him? Two reasons, yeah. two presuppositions. Yeah. The name of Uzzah in Hebrew means strength. Mm -hmm. And so if the name of Uzzah means strength, yeah. If Uzzah helps the ark from falling, hey. then God has a problem. Mm. That Uzzah does Uzzah has the strength. Ah. And God does not have the strength. So God has to defend his reputation. Yeah. Yeah. But I have the strength. Uzzah, you don't have the strength. So presupposition number one, I have the strength, you don't have the strength. Oh. 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 Mm. Ah. Presupposition number two. Yeah. The ark is shaking. Yeah. Right. And so, if the ark is shaking, yeah. if Uzzah helps the ark from shaking, yeah. then we have a God that cannot stand in shaky situations. Hey, so I can't risk with my own reputation. I will have to kill you, Uzzah to defend my own reputation. Uza, I can stand in shaky situation. Hear yeah. the words of the preacher, I present to you a God yeah. that can stand in shaky situations. Yeah. So, so the Bible says he dies, right? Yeah. And there's blood all over the ark. Yeah. David is angry. I was doing a noble thing. God, I was fetching you from a wrong location. How do you fetch God? <laughs> God, I was fetching you from a wrong location for 52 years. Your, your own kings left you there. Yeah. I was fetching you to bring you to your rightful position. That's the first mistake. Yeah. You can't carry God. God carries you. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the narrative, please. The Bible says, the Bible says, um, the boy dies, Uzzah dies while he was trying to assist God. Yeah. Many of you will die mm. because you are trying to assist God. Mm. But that's not where really I want to go, but follow me nicely. Mm. So, so he dies and David leaves the ark again midway to its original destination. Mm. <coughs> he leaves it at the house of Obedia. Yeah. 
and is there leading. Remember his first statement. Yeah. How do I lead in the absence of God? Yeah. But he goes and leads because he's disappointed with God. Mm -hmm. Many of us have started a protest with God <coughs> when we were actually the ones who God needed to start a protest against us. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says, and so the Bible says he starts a protest against God, a protest against God for three months. He's in the kingdom leading. Angry at God, the same God who called him and anointed him for this position. So you have people, you have people who are doing God's work, yet they're angry at him. And so the Bible says, so the Bible says he he then he then he then does this thing for three months. But at the house of obedience there was worship. And so the address of God changed. <laughs> and he became a resident at the house of Obedia. Because at the house of Obedia, there was worship in tragedy. They did not look at their situation. They looked at the situation, but they understood that we don't worship God through our feelings, we worship Him through our faith. Amen. And so the Bible says, at the house of Obedia, there was worship. David hears that the ark is performing at the house of Obedia. And the Bible says, he then says, gentlemen, it's fine now. The protest ends here. Yeah. Let's go fetch it. Mm. Tell it's working. <laughs> Let, let's go fetch it. They go and fetch it. When they arrive at the house of Obedium, David says, uh -uh, I'm never going to make the same mistake I made the last time. I will transport holy things in holy manners. Yeah. And I will, I will transport this thing according to the book of Deuteronomy and the, according to the book of Leviticus. Yeah. That we'll have four men carrying this up with sticks. Yeah. And, and, and this time we will use the right methods. Yeah. We'll use the right method to, pro, to, 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 to transport God's things. Can I say this to all of us? While we do our own things, yeah. make sure you use God's method. Yeah. And so the Bible says, and so the Bible says they, they, he carries four men with him to go transport the ark. And two in front and two at the back, and they are carrying sticks. And David says, ah, I will become excellent while I transport it. Look at him. I will become excellent. I, I will ignore everything. Yeah. And I will do things right. Not only will I do things right, but I also not only take Deuteronomy and Leviticus, I would also like to bring the book of Psalms to place. Leviticus, they only transported him because the Lord dictated. But with me, I'm an excellent king. I will not only transport it in this manner, I will transport it in a rightful and excellent manner. Give me four men. Not only will they transport the ark, but they will worship the ark while they're transporting it. And so the Bible says, he says to them, you will carry this ark and you will only take six steps. And after six steps, you stop and you worship this ark. Six steps you take and you will stop and you will worship this ark. Six steps you take and you will stop and you will worship this ark. Allow me to be an Adventist preacher. Six days thou shalt labor. Six days. Six steps you will take. Six steps you will take and you will stop. And you will worship him. The reason why they are worshiping him, friends, is for this reason. They realize that what you are carrying, we are not carrying it. It is carrying us. So see Jerry. How I see so, so we don't keep the Sabbath. Yeah. The Sabbath keeps us. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Be careful of keeping things that keep you. Yeah. And so David says, we will march and we will have a worship ceremony. Yeah. So every six steps they took, they realized grace has kept us. And therefore we stop and we worship. And that's why this Sabbath day must not be a boring segment of our lives yeah. where we come and tick the register. Yeah. We are here because we realize that it has carried us for the six, six days. Yeah. And so we want to dedicate our lives to it so that it can carry us more. Yeah. So we stop mm. and we wash. Mm. And so I don't know, the journey took longer yeah. because of the worship. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Maybe he will delay to come because of our worship. Yeah. So the Bible says, friends, they, they take six steps, they stop and they worship, and they realize that uh, it is carrying us. We are not carrying it. They arrive in Israel. Yeah. When they arrive in Israel, yes, sir. David looks at the ark. Yeah. And the Bible says he takes off his puchiness, his kingship, hey. and he started to dance. Yeah. Ah. A whole king looking at the ark, losing himself yeah. to worship the ark. Many of us are so puchy in church. No. Hmm. If you come here and you sit the way you want to sit, because you want to show us how nice you are. Can I tell you, it's not about you. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> it's not about your makeup. Yeah. It's not about your Louis Vuitton. No. It's not about your Gucci. It's not about. It's about the ark. Yeah. So David loses himself. Yeah. For the sake of the ark. Can I say this before I leave? Yeah. Lose yourself for God. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to be excellent, lose yourself for God. Yeah. And so the king takes off his bouginess. Look at the story. Yeah. The whole kingdom is watching. Yeah. While the king is dancing. Mm -hmm. And he started to dance. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says when he was dancing, mm -hmm. the whole nation started to dance. Oh, Mafaru, I think. The reason why our churches are cold is because our pastors are cold. The reason why our churches are not dancing is because our pastors are not dancing. And so the Bible says he started to dance and the whole kingdom joined him. Three reasons, and I close the sermon. Why should David dance? The first reason bring it up. David dances because God allowed his correction to take place. It was not Uzzah that was supposed to die. Yeah. David was supposed to die. Yeah. David employed this instrument of oxen and a child. Yeah. So God sacrificed Uzzah yeah. for the correction of David. Yeah. And so David looks at the heart and starts dancing yeah. because David realizes yeah. that this man kept me in my mistake. Yeah. I could have died who I was supposed to live. Many of us should pause right now yeah. and start dancing because God allowed our corrections to take place. Yeah. Let me real in this place. Yeah. We're not supposed to be here. Yeah. We're supposed to have died long time ago. Yeah. But many died before you because God wanted your correction yeah. to take place. And so I dance yeah. because I realize that he's merciful uh -huh. and that his mercy has kept me in my mistake. Yeah. In other words, I dance because I realize the blood of Uzzah. Yeah. <laughs> Christology. Yeah. I dance because I realize yeah. the blood of Uzzah was for my correction. Hey. So we dance because we realize the blood of Jesus was for our correction. And so, I dance because he allowed my correction to take place. My life is going to be mad. I dance because I have a correction. Yeah. Second reason why I dance. Yeah. I dance because I have a confirmation. Yeah. And so David leaves to go get the ark at the house of Obedia. Yeah. The ark arrives. Yeah. David starts dancing. He dances not because the ark has performed, yeah. but he dances because he has heard and seen what the ark can do in the house of Obedia. Yeah. So I dance in anticipation yeah. 
of what the ark is about to do. I grew up in the Mukuchatanga region. So many, many years ago, if you want to see my age, we had this um, taxis for ice cream. You remember them? Yeah. If you are in my generation. Um, and so these taxis used to have uh, music they play when they get into the neighborhood. So they would play a certain music and, and all of us will know that ice cream has arrived. Mm -hmm. So back then what we used to do, we would not run towards the taxi. Mm -hmm. We would run towards our houses mm -hmm. and stand by the gate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And stand by the gate mm -hmm. with money, mm -hmm. waiting in anticipation Where? of the arrival of the taxi. We did not see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we heard what's yeah. news. Oh. We, we have not seen it, but we heard its music, and because we have heard its music, yeah. we know of its arrival. So I dance in anticipation, yeah. not because I have received, I dance because my neighbor has received. And if my neighbor has received, then Jesus is in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't dance because I've received my car. I dance because my father has received the car. I don't dance because I have my healing. I dance because my neighbor is healed. I don't dance because my life is fine. I dance because Tato's life is fine. I dance in anticipation. Yeah. I dance in anticipation. But not because I have received. Because I have heard what he can do for my neighbor. And so David dances in the arrival of the ark, yet the ark has not performed. And I say this to someone this afternoon. The ark has arrived, but start your dancing. Maybe you will receive because you have danced. Yes. So the Bible says, come on, let's close it. So the Bible says, um, the last reason why he chances is because God chose him. So, um, when everyone was dancing, David's wife was not dancing. What a sad story. Come on. So the woman goes to him, we all know the story, and says, um, Chief, you are a king. Why are you behaving like a woman? Remember, She's the daughter of Saul, so she knows how kings must behave. Yeah. I look at David. Yeah. I dance because God chose me, not your father. Yay! I dance not because I'm perfect. I dance because He chose. Yeah. This morning, I don't want to speak to perfect people. Yeah. I want to speak to a young person that says, Lord, for the mere fact that I'm here, I know that you've chosen me. Yeah. Uh, not many people are here. Yeah. Not many made it to this world. But because I made it, I just want to dance. There's someone in this place, Pastor Mafar, who's been in a protest with God for so many years. About something that happened to them years ago. Hey. Now, hear the words of the preacher. Stop that protest mm -hmm. and fetch the ark this morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know the tragedies you have faced, mm -hmm. but at this moment, they will not help you with anything. Yeah. To dance in the midst of that pain, mm -hmm. dance in the midst of those tears. Dance because God gave you a confirmation that God has chosen you. Is there someone in this place who says, God, I thank you for my correction. Thank you that you have kept me in my mistakes up until now. If you are the then I pray. Oh, yeah. Oh, God.
There's somebody else, like Pastor was saying, you've been thinking about suicide lately. That's what you've been thinking about in your mind. You think about letting go. You think about forgetting. Pastor is still there. Is there anybody? Just raise your hand and Pastor will help you out. Is there anybody else? Friends, don't worry. Jesus is in the house. Is there anybody else? God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Is there anybody else? You know yourself. Oh, Father, what will happen after this? We have nothing to ask you of but to thank you so much more for what you have done for us in this place. May your name be praised and glorified eternally. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you so much, Joe, back this morning. I want to thank um, the Kenyans, I want to thank the Zimbabweans for what they have done. What does Botswana say? 